Senator Roy Blunt of Missouri, kind enough to join us on this beautiful Friday morning. He's with us in studio. Senator, it's always good to see you. Thanks for coming by. Hey, it's good to be here with you, and it's a, what a great day out there today. Oh, yeah. I, I know at the top of your agenda, at the top of uh, uh, what you're talking about and thinking about these days, the problems at the Veterans Administration. Uh, we spoke with uh, our White House correspondent probably 45 minutes ago, and she said that the uh, president is sitting down with Eric Shinseki, the head of the VA, this morning. He's going to do it about an hour from now. What should the president say to him today? You know, I think generally the president needs to start taking responsibility for the government. Uh, if this was just the VA, uh, you could say this could be General Shinseki, but it's the VA, it's uh, the website on uh, Obamacare, it's these uh, locations that were supposed to be processing paperwork for Obamacare. It's the foreign policy of the country. It's really like nobody's minding the store. It's like we've got an absentee operator running the government. Uh, and I, I'd like to see the president take responsibility both for the Veterans Administration and for the rest of the government. It's time the president engaged and took some responsibility. If it wasn't for the news media, apparently the president wouldn't know anything. Uh, everything he says, well, I just heard about this in the paper. I didn't know this was going on until I read it in the paper. Mm -hmm. You know, we had these uh, this location in our state at Wentzville, Missouri, where they had 600 people processing uh, the paperwork for uh, applications for uh, uh, the uh, health care that would come in by paper, and none of them were coming in. And so they were telling them to play Pictionary, uh, uh, refresh your computer every 10 minutes so it looks like you're doing something. This was a one and a quarter billion dollar contract to a British company that had already failed to provide services in Britain to the government. We had a Canadian company that uh, had failed to provide computer services to Canada, so we got them to develop the website for Obamacare. Uh, now we've got uh, a VA system where we owe our veterans uh, the obligation that they, uh, in, that they got during their service, and clearly that system's not working either. You don't think Shinseki should step down, and you may be in the minority there. He's had five years. Why shouldn't he? Well, he has had five years, but I think if he does, and I'm, I may be in the minority, and I'm not, in, I'm not critical at all of any others who said that the answer here is for him to resign. I think that's too easy an answer. Uh, you know, the others, another group that says we should spend more money. The VA's had more money for the last five years than they could spend. Every single year they've turned money back. I think, Ellen, what would happen is if Shinseki leaves, and he may very well leave, might happen today. I have no idea. But if he does leave, then there will be this natural, well, we're going to put a new secretary in. Uh, we'll give that person a couple of years to get this straightened out. Then there'll be a new president, and then there'll be another new secretary, and we'll give that person a couple of years to get this straightened out. I don't think there's anything that we're going to learn about the VA that we don't know right now. And this is a great time to look at alternatives, uh, to give v veterans more choices. Veterans should be able to have the best care at the best location at the best value for them and taxpayers that we could possibly provide. Senator Roy Blunt is with us in studio. So I've, I've mentioned this a couple of times to your colleagues like uh, uh, Senator Moran, and I think we talked about it with Senator McCaskill as well. Can, uh, is, there a, is there a voucher system? Is there some kind of system you could develop that says to the veteran, hey, you can be part of regular Medicare. You can be part of this program. You can be part of what, go wherever you want. We will take care of you. I, I think so, and I've been saying that for 10 years. In fact, I was at a meeting yesterday at the Truman uh, Hospital in, uh, uh, in Columbia, and one of my really good friends from the VFW who was at that same meeting with the people running that hospital uh, said, uh, uh, you know, I'm, I'm beginning to change my mind on this and think that Senator Blunt's been right for the last 10 years. Not that we should eliminate the VA, but that we should add options mm -hmm. to the VA. I think saying you're going to eliminate the VA and just replace that with a voucher system uh, is, is something that won't get anywhere. There are too many people who have real confidence and real uh, connection to the VA to eliminate the VA, but I think you could restructure the VA. There are things they should be able to do better than anybody else. Uh, post-traumatic stress. They should understand that better than any other mental health provider. Uh, IED accidents, mm -hmm. eye injuries, but there are all kinds of other things that other people can do equally well and probably better, and you shouldn't have veterans have to drive by five facilities that could do something better to get to a facility uh, that isn't going to do it quite as well. You know, it, we've talked about a little bit of the money here. You said they've given money back. There's also bonus money at stake in this uh, in this VA mess as well. When we come back from traffic and weather, I want to ask you if, if 
there should ever be a bonus connected with the health of our military, our veterans. Is that just wrong, and is that part of the problem? Let's talk about it. Senator Roy Blunt is with us, but let's do traffic and weather together here real quick now. We do it every 10 minutes on the nines. Johnny, if you kick us off and we can get through this quickly, we'll come right back to the senator. Good morning, E.J. Becker, Ellen Shank, along with you. Senator Roy Blunt of Missouri is with us in studio. Senator, we were talking about the VA and treatment and the bonus system, and, and reportedly some of the wait time can be blamed on um, workers trying to get their bonuses by hiding that wait time. Should a bonus system be involved in the health care of our veterans? Yeah, I, I don't actually think you can blame the wait time on that, but I do think you can say they're trying to get their 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 bonuses by hiding the wait time. Yes. You know, it's not, uh, it's, it's not why they have the wait time. You know, if they have wait time, again, let's go back to alternatives. If the, if the VA has wait time in certain skill sets, they should be able to find other people to do that work. Just send them somewhere else. You know, if you've got if you've got someone who's uh, needs immediate care, they should get immediate care, whether they're whether they have a heart attack or whether they're suicidal. And by the way, they're equally treatable and equal emergencies. You can't say, well, heart attack, we can't stop. Let's see if we can talk him out of suicide. You need to get that person somewhere immediately too. And if you don't have a bed, you need to find a bed to make that happen. And we need if if there's any obstacle to the VA to be able to to do that, we need to eliminate those obstacles. This is a important time to rethink how we provide services in a society that's rethinking how we provide all other services. You know, that people want more information, they want it quicker, they want more choices, and particularly EJ and Ellen for young veterans, they're trying to to balance uh, the mental and physical health challenges mm -hmm. they may have with work, with a schedule. Uh, this is not a retired veteran who wants to go and sit at the veterans hospital all the day, all day and and think about uh, the, their days of serving the country. They're trying to work this into their life. Briefly, uh, Senator, I, I want to ask you real quick about uh, you know mental health is a big issue in the military, but you just gave us a statistic that is stunning. Uh, mental health is an issue everywhere. Well, it is, and actually, uh, Senator Stabino, a Democrat from um, Michigan, and I introduced legislation uh, in, early in 2013, the Excellence in Mental Health Act. And we were able to get a significant part of that included in a bill the president signed recently uh, to where at uh, behavioral uh, clinics, uh, community clinics like the Truman Clinic in Kansas City uh, and federally qualified clinics that have behavioral health that uh, would treat mental health as a federal payer, as a government payer for the first time, really, like every other health issue. And the National Institute of Health says that one out of four adult Americans has a diagnosable and almost always treatable uh, mental health one problem. One out of four. One out of four. That's amazing. And we think uh, talking to the Surgeon Generals of the military, I asked them this question a couple of months ago at a hearing, uh, would this be reflected in the military? And their answer was yes. Mm -hmm. They said we recruit from the normal population. Before they have, even go in. We don't have any issues. reason to believe that we wouldn't have those same kinds of issues. And the thing that we all understand societally is that that doesn't mean that every one of those people, that virtually almost all those people can't effectively serve you just need to treat their mental health issue like you'd treat any other health issue. Uh, and uh, hopefully we'll begin to see uh, society move dramatically in that direction. And if you treat mental health the, the right way, your physical health costs go way down. Your, your stress goes down. You eat better. Your, 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 uh, your diet's better. Your, 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 you see your doctor. You take your medicines. Uh, I'm not, I think there's probably almost no cost in dealing with mental health as part of the, an overall health picture because it, it solves your other health, helps you solve your other health problems so much quicker. Senator Roy Blunt is with us in studio. Senator, I want to uh, talk about something that uh, we, we seem to talk about in the media and in Washington on and off over the course of the last five, six, seven years, something called the economy. I want to talk about that, but can you can you stay with us here as we check sports and traffic and weather? You have a couple more minutes? I can stay for a couple more minutes. All right, I'm very good. Forward to Day it. 21 now on Kansas City's Morning News. KMBZ Brain Buster coming up here in just a minute, but we do have Senator Roy Blunt with us live in studio. And uh, let's switch from talking about the VA, Senator, to talking about the economy. GDP numbers out this week, and they were off. They showed a contraction. It's being blamed, of course, on a very harsh winter that took quite an impact on, on retail sales and, and businesses across the board how worried are you about the economy and how is there anybody out there that's not worried about the economy well there shouldn't be anybody that's not worried about the economy and the the growth of private sector jobs should be our number one priority and not that hard i think to accomplish i mean we're, we're only about three or four common sense decisions away uh, from I, I think great opportunities and particularly good opportunities for the middle of the country but we continue to 
forget the common sense part. I think the president's going to do that again on Monday. Well, briefly, what are those common sense ideas? Good, good, good energy policies would be the first one. Good utility policies, good energy policies. Uh, the, uh, the not using our energy in, in our, our best way, doubling our utility bills, uh, makes it much less likely that we'll have the manufacturing resurgence that I think the country's ready for. Uh, you know, we don't have a lot of the new American energy exactly where we live, but we're surrounded by it. Uh, world food needs are going to double between now and 2070. Uh, that's an incredible opportunity for America, an incredible opportunity for the middle of the country. The right transportation policies. I spoke to the Missouri General Assembly about a month ago, and I said, the next, before you get too much further from where we're talking right here today, get out a highway map of America, get out a railroad map of America, Get out a river map of America and focus to where those all three of those logically come together. And it's right where we live. So, you know, transportation, energy, taking advantage of uh, of, of the world marketplace that we're going to have such an opportunity in uh, could all be great. But we continue to want to overregulate and do things that hold us back instead of move us forward. I think the president's policies to be announced next week on carbon and energy, where we basically stop using the fossil fuels that we have, if you listen to him, uh, will be economically disastrous. Senator Roy Blunt with us in the studio. We know you have another meeting you need to uh, to get to. We always appreciate you stopping by. But don't you think he should be the one to give the brain buster well, question? That's very Since, true. I mean, it's his idea. Very true. The KMBZ brain buster. <laughs> uh, we're going to give you the, uh, the, the question now, and then we'll give you the answer later yes. so what we do senator you're just going to give him the question so i just give him the question and the question would be who is the only president of the united states who had a pet there you go who's the only president to have a patent senator roy blunt with the kmbz brain buster today hey, the senator, next time we're at a loss for trivia questions can we just give you a call can we just call, give me a call. <laughs> senator, always appreciate it thank you so much